very few people had really thought about the way that we work. You know, you wake up in the morning, you commute to work, you sit down at your desk from nine to five. We really kind of had this inflection point that needed a pretty eye-catching uh, person. Who better to tell us the old ways of working are dead than a dead guy? It's all made up. These old ideas, working in an office, nine to five. Uh, so, if it's all made up, what's stopping you from making up something better? I'm Hannes Chetty, I'm the Chief Creative Officer at Alto and the founder of Alto as well. Hi, I'm Zacharias and I'm a director. I'm Nick Landon and I was the uh, film producer. My name is Patrick Holly, and I'm the Executive Creative Director at Upwork. Tell us how this came about. This ad came from this realization that we hadn't rethought the way that we as a society have worked since the Industrial Revolution. With This Is How We Work Now, we wanted it to be as much a ad for Upwork as it is an ad for the new way of working that we're all going about nowadays. After the pandemic, there was a big question, how are we gonna like work together and how companies succeed? And so that needed to be solved. Ads during the pandemic were more somber, more earnest. And as we kind of found our way out of that, uh, there was almost this kind of time for a bit of a levity. And, and celebration and, um, and humor. When the inception of the idea came about, and with every big and scary and crazy idea, you have this, oh, crap moment, how are we gonna sell this <laughs> to, to our client? We were kind of stopped in our tracks by Jack the Dead CEO. That's always a good thing. When you have some kind of reaction where you're just like, what? Yeah, this could work. When you come to someone with a dead person being resurrected, uh, not many clients, <laughs> Say yes, but it also comes down to actually building a smart strategy behind it and mm -hmm. having some clear cultural insight. And I think when you do that, you know, great work can follow. What was the process like building this whole musical theme behind this kind of epic ad, as it were? When we looked at the scripts, there were some obvious, you know, challenges with it. A deaf guy, a song, multiple sweeping locations, and a lot of different characters. Bringing that all together needed a real master and creating a musical piece out of it that also told a clear story. And I think there's nobody better out there than Ivan Zacharias. Hannes from Alto and the guys liked uh, some stuff we did before and they thought that we might be good with that people as well. We were extremely excited when he wanted to work with us and he just absolutely knocked out of the park. We started with daily Zoom calls. Normally it would be, oh God, another phone call and another. But these guys were really funny. The amount of communication we had to have with them to put it together was probably treble what we'd ordinarily have throughout the process. But it was always a pleasure. It was great hanging out with Nikki Van and we really like broke down the script. One of the things that drew us to the project were, were the kind of lines in the music track. We soon found that connecting spaghetti western songs with an Elvis voice really gave us that comedic relief. The old way of working is deader than me. What we would try and do is try and make the track the length of the act that the film needed to be. It was a couple of hours every night, this kind of ongoing musical development. That process with Walker Music took us two months to oh, actually wow. get to the song. To this day, it is stuck in my head. I will find myself in the shower just humming along to it, and I don't think it's going anywhere anytime soon. I think it lives up there rent free. We'd done a few musicals before, so we knew what you had to do to be ready to go and film it. What we didn't realize is that we couldn't really progress at all until we had the actor. Our main actor, Ross Turner, who plays Jack, our dad CEO, is an absolute professional. Once we had the actor, we needed to start with the prosthetic work. I've never, until this campaign, had to think about what limb falls off the talent at any given time, when his eyeball should fall out, what that eyeball should look like when it falls out. There were lots of rigging involved in his suit and things like that, so it needed to be really thought through. Back when I had a working circulatory system, you had to give your right arm to find great talent. He needed to be in hair and makeup for four hours every day. He turned up at three in the morning and then got his prosthetics made up. There were different latex pieces that got put onto him. It was very, very hot in Portugal when we shot that. So I was really worried about him and he just managed everything perfectly. Shoot days were up to 15 hours. So this guy was there often for like 18, 20 hours a day for five days straight in full gi and full hair and makeup with the prosthetics and, and his suit. Before you're six feet underground. 
how long did the, the whole process take? Before we started shooting, it was probably like six weeks. We shot for a week in Portugal. We needed to create 30 pieces of content out of the five shoot days. We were basically fitting in a lot more than we would ordinarily kind of do on each day. I think at the end we shot like nine or 11 commercials in six days, which is something that we normally don't do. What's the reaction been to the campaign? This has uh, been actually a wildly successful campaign for us. We ended up uh, kind of crushing a lot of our metrics. There has been a lot of positive feedback. We also had some very uh, visceral reactions <laughs> from some audience members. Worst ad I've ever seen was my favorite. I take it actually as a positive sign that a campaign is actually out there and challenges the norms that we have, that some people are outraged. When you go the direction of zombie CEO whose limbs fall off in the middle of a campaign about a freelancing and a remote work platform, you're gonna get some reactions, both good and bad. Putting your brand out there and having a take on the world will be more important than ever. I think that there's a lot of value in finding amazing creative partners and letting them do their thing. And we're really lucky to have partners like Alto and the folks over at Smuggler to help us do that. We tend to do quite classical narrative-led pieces. So every now and then it's really good to kind of shake it up and throw something completely kind of eccentric and different. In. They tend to be musicals for some reason. I kind of hate musicals, so I don't know why I'm doing it all the time.